Hey there. Subscribe to my channel and also press this bell icon. So you can get latest video notifications. And this is absolutely free. You will hear a conversation between a customer service representative and a customer who demands a full refund. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 4. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Hello and welcome to Under Pressure Enterprises Customer Service Department. This is Kelly. How may I help you? Yes, I'm calling about one of your rice cookers I just purchased. What seems to be the problem, sir? Seems? There's no seeming about it. The blasted thing shoots hot steam all over the place, that's what. It nearly scalded my hand when I went to open it. Why, it could have killed the cat or something. It could have exploded and killed my wife and me. Sir, sir, please calm down. As long as the steam escapes the cooker, it won't explode. So you're telling me there's no problem? Are you calling me a liar? Sir, no one is calling you a liar. Yes, so I demand a full refund. Under pressure, we'll be happy to refund your money, sir. Now, I just need some basic information. Okay, okay. Sorry, I do tend to get a little hot under the collar. My wife tells me to slow down. So, what do you need to know? Sir, don't worry. I just need to ask you the model number of the cooker. Hmm. Where are my glasses? Ah, here. Let's see. Ah, it's R242. R242. Okay. And how much did you pay for the product? £89.99. It was on sale, I guess I should tell you. Thank you, that's honest of you. Now, where did you buy the cooker? Which store and which branch? At that big electric life appliance store downtown. The city centre branch? That's the one. And you say the problem is that the steam escapes? Yes, it does. No problem, sir. If there's steam escaping, clearly the cooker is broken or defective. So we have an R242 cooker with an escaping steam problem. It was bought from Electric Life City Centre Branch for eighty nine ninety nine. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Oh, I nearly forgot. When did you buy the cooker? Just as soon as my wife got the crazy idea, she'll live longer if she stops eating good English food, roast beef and mash. No, all she says she wants is rice and vegetables and sauces you'd not soak your feet in. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. Sir, sir, when did you buy it? Oh, there I go again. Let's see. We bought it just six months ago. We hardly use it either. But six months? Is that too long? I mean, for the warranty? Very well. That's well within the warranty period. Now, what's your name and address? Name and address? What for? Sir, it is company policy. If you want your money, you must inform me. Money, you say? Oh, my name is Herbert Hewitt, and my address is 84 Park Road. Is that here in Coventry? Yes. The postal code is B0241DJ. But I don't think sending things in the mail is very secure or very efficient. I mean... Don't worry, Mr. Hewitt, don't worry. We can credit the money to your credit card. You do have one, don't you? Yes, that's how we paid for the cooker. Oh, yes. 
We still have the number on the computer. I only need to ask your card's expiry date. I'm afraid I never give that sort of information out. I mean, once you have that, anyone could go charging things and... Sir, I said your expiry date, not your card's password. Oh, uh, yes. Foolish me. Of course, you didn't say password. Let's see. That will be April 2008. April 2008. Very well. Your card still has nearly two months left to go. We'll get that refund right to you, probably by five o'clock this evening. You had better. If I don't get my money... Wait, wait. Yes, I know I'm losing my temper again. I really am sorry. I haven't had my medicine today. And, sir, just one more question for our records. How often do you go shopping at the city centre branch? Oh, well, it's hard to say. I suppose maybe once a month. But I can tell you this. If I don't get my refund, I'll never shop there again. Oh, I think it's time to start looking for another job. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Two. You will hear someone talking about a wildlife park. Before you listen, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning, everyone. I'm a keeper here at Arana Wildlife Park, and that means that my job is to look after some of the animals that we have here. First, let me tell you a bit about us. Um, the word Arana means welcome in the local Māori language, and we are very pleased to see you all here. <laughs> As you probably know, we're run by a charity, and we specialise in endangered species of animals, birds and reptiles. The park grounds cover 80 hectares of land, and we have 400 animals altogether from 70 different species. So that you can see the animals in their natural environment, we've built streams and banks to separate you from the animals and make sure your trip around the park is safe. Oh. <laughs> Our animals come mainly from here, New Zealand, and from Australia, Africa and South America. There are a lot of animals to see and quite a number of things you can do here, so let me tell you about a few of the exciting encounters before you decide where to go. <clears throat> One of our most popular animals is a type of giraffe called a Rothschild. It's easy to spot. It has three horns rather than the usual two. Oh. Giraffes are amazing animals close up, and you have an opportunity to hand feed them here at the park at 12 noon or 3 in the afternoon. This is one of the most popular activities and will be one that you'll never forget. In fact, we believe hands-on education is very important, so you can touch or pat a variety of friendly animals, such as cows and goats, at the farmyard. This experience goes on all day and is designed to help children take an interest in animals and their environment. I can assure you it's not at all dangerous. 
<laughs> Another exciting activity for visitors is watching some of our big cats reach speeds of up to 70 kilometers per hour during their exercise run. The cheetah is the fastest land mammal, and this event takes place at 3:40 every day. You can watch them go down their paddock in under 30 seconds. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. So, here's a plan of the park. As you can see, we're here at the main entrance and there's an information centre to your right. Now, it's quite easy to get around the park. We have daily guided walkabout tours which let you get up close to the animals. Or, if you prefer to be at a distance, you can take the safari bus and drive around with a wildlife expert. If you decide to take the walkabout tour, it leaves at 10.45, that's in just under an hour, from the meerkats enclosure next to us. From there, the walk passes the adventure playground and the otters in the first enclosure, and then arrives at the New Zealand birds area in the next enclosure, just in time to see them being fed. Then you go on to the reptile house and the tigers and the rest of the animals. Alternatively, you can wait until the afternoon walk. There are plenty of other things to see in the morning. One of these is the African village. Just turn to your right from the main entrance, walk past the first bus stop, and it's just before the African wild dogs enclosure. It's a wonderful, colourful experience. You can also go to the shop and buy your souvenirs there. We have beautiful soft toys, giraffe and zebra, for children, and a whole range of T-shirts, hats and skincare products with an African theme. After that, why not have lunch in the picnic area on the far eastern side of the park? I'd recommend this because while you're eating, you might catch sight of the ostriches on one side of you or buffalo on the other. For the afternoon walkabout tour, you'll need to find your own way to the African lion habitat, which is on the west side of the park, just past the conservation centre. To join the tour, you actually go past the lion habitat. You'll see two bus stops, keep walking, and the meeting place is about half a kilometre after the second one. If you've gone past the zebra, you've gone too far. For those of you who would prefer to travel on the safari bus, this runs from 10.30 to 4pm. There are stations throughout the park, but the first one is at Jomo's Cafe, which is directly opposite where we're standing. Go straight ahead, and it's just in front of the giraffes. There are various feeding times for the animals, and the bus stops in time for all of these. So, let me just give you some safety guidelines. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. You will hear two medical students, Caitlin and Hideki, discussing options for courses. You now have 15 seconds to read questions 21 to 23.
Hi, Hideki. How are you? Fine. I'm glad I bumped into you. Have you got five minutes to sit down and discuss our extra course options for next term? Yes,、yeah, sure. You mean the support courses for our modules? Yes. We've got three choices, and I'm not sure which would be best for us to do. Let's have a look. Um, yeah, we could do science and ethics. Sounds quite interesting. Yes, but I think we should be thinking what we get out of each course.、Mm. So, science and ethics, there's a lot of reading and research to do. And I don't think it comes up in the exams, does it? Um, I'm not sure. Uh,. Oh, I see. We have to do assignments, and we get our score from that. But what it would do is to force us to get better at doing essays and reports. You know, organizing them and using the right kind of language、mm. might be worthwhile. Yeah, you're right. An alternative is the pharmacology prelim course. Oh, I think it's in case we want to go on to transfer to pharmacology at the end of the year, because lots of students do.、Mm-hmm. So it depends what we want to do in the future, but apparently, they send you off to find out about various companies and the differences between their products. It would give you lots of practice in investigative studies and analysis. I think I'd quite enjoy that. Yes, I see your point.、Um, then the other option is reporting test results. Sounds a bit boring. Not sure why they have a separate course just for that. Well, I could certainly do with some help in that, because if you go out into industry, that's what you'll spend most of your time doing.、Mm. So it's got a very practical application.、Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to go for pharmacology. Me too. You now have thirty seconds to read questions twenty-four to thirty. So let's have a look at it in more detail. Oh goodness! If we do pharmacology, then we have to do a supplementary maths course. Oh no, that's not fair.、Mm. Mind you, I think I need it. <laughs> Does that mean we have twice as many lectures? No, this maths is only a short course. The chemistry department are responsible, and they do it in the third term. So we've got all next term to settle into the pharmacology bit. Ah,、oh, I find the tutor makes a real difference. Some of them make chemistry so easy, and some of them I can't understand at all. Like that one we had from Oxford University. Oh, <laughs> mind you, the one on this course should make sense because he's a lecturer who's coming in for a few weeks from industry. So at least it'll be linked to the real world. <laughs> yeah. The project we have to do on this pharmacology course is huge, and it doesn't give us much time. We have to make a decision about what we want to do on the project as soon as we start in January, and then hand in our plans before the end of the month. Doesn't give us much time to sort out what's possible or not.、Mm. I mean, doesn't the scale of our project depend on what resources we can have, like what equipment we can use? I suppose so, though I think there's plenty available. For example, it says that if we need to do any experiments, then we can use all the equipment in the new lab, as long as we book it. Oh, okay. It's slowly beginning to take shape for me. I think it'll be a good course. I'm just worried that I get enough support to do it.、Huh. I think you'll be okay. And the tutors are always available if you get stuck. No,、oh, actually, it says that if you're not sure, then in December they'll be running one or two additional seminars. So I might go to those. Actually, what's quite interesting is that at the end of the course, when our project is completed, then we have to do a presentation on it. Oh, 
I think that's quite good practice. Oh, a bit scary, though. <laughs> well, it shouldn't be too bad, as they say that we can do it in pairs. Oh. Spread the load, as it were. <laughs> oh, good. I have done presentations before, but I'm always very nervous. And is the presentation what we're assessed on, then? Let me look. Um... Ah, it says that we have an interview and we get a mark for the whole course depending on how well we do in that. Oh, right. Okay, so I... That is the end of part three. Now it turns to part four. You will hear a student representative explaining the views of the student body about how a large donation to the school should be spent. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Thank you, Mr Chairman, for asking the student body about the recent large donation to our school and what it should be spent on. Also, thank you to the rest of the Board of Trustees for letting us have some say over how to improve our university. We know that sometimes students and administration have different priorities regarding the development of the school, but we hope you sincerely consider some of the ideas that are proposed. When the estate of Paul A. Madrib announced that he had left over $50 million to the school, the whole community was quite ecstatic and very grateful for such a generous gift. Since the initial euphoria has passed, though, we have all realised that some tough decisions have to be made. The donation can help fund new projects for the school or improve existing facilities and programmes. But there is not enough money to pay for every single idea. That is why the University Senate, through an online survey, asked the student body what ideas they thought were best. The first part of this survey consisted of an open question. Students could list any number of different ideas. The results were then compiled in order to do a second online survey. Ideas that were totally impossible, or those that were jokes, were taken out. All the ideas that consistently came up again and again were put to a vote. We found that the four things that came up the most were all pretty different. I will mention them briefly before going over the pros and cons of each of them. In the first part of the survey, we saw over and over again that students wanted to improve the residential dormitories, completely redo the campus dining system, remodel the athletics building, and finally increase funding for research projects and grants, especially for those in science. Obviously, there is not enough money from the donation to pay for all those ideas, so we have to prioritise. The ideas that got the most votes were improving the residential dormitories and completely redoing the campus dining system. They both got 30% and 28% respectively of students saying that was what most of the money should be spent on. Many of the dorm facilities are quite old and definitely need some repair particularly the shared bathrooms. Also, students have been complaining for a while that there is not an adequate number of dining facilities on campus and that the quality of the food at existing places is low. Spending most of the donation in these areas would definitely improve the quality of life on campus. However, a significant minority of the student population, about 40%, does not live on campus. They commute from their homes elsewhere and therefore would not benefit from those improvements. 25% of students thought improving the athletics building was the best use of the money 
and 17% voted for giving money to research projects for science. There are many people who are attracted to our university because of our athletics programs, so improving the building would improve the reputation of the university. Only a small percentage of students actually ever use the athletics building, however. Though it received the fewest votes, giving money to university research projects has great potential. Any new patents that come about because of that research can possibly earn the school lots of money. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.